Chapter 3 Lily had just left the meeting room after finishing her meeting with the shareholders when she saw her female employees talking and laughing at their cell phones. How dare they shrug their duties during working hours? Lily walked toward them intending to reprimand, but instead she saw that they were watching a video, and in that video was none other than Daryl. My bike, bro. Don't worry. I'll avenge you for this. In the video, Daryl was caressing his bike with a face full of sorrow. <laughs> this guy is hilarious. Who is it? You don't know? It's Miss Linden's husband. What? Do you mean that piece of trash, Daryl? So I've heard that she was married to a piece of trash. The ladies were happily gossiping away when one of them stood up and did a mimicry of Daryl. I don't suppose you girls know that earlier today, when I just arrived at work, I heard Daryl said he was going to buy the worship of Crystal for Miss Linden. Oh, <laughs> that is such a huge joke. Yeah, look at how uncouth he is, so distressed over his broken bike. The worship of Crystal costs 30 million. He'll have to work several lifetimes for that amount. Their discussion was in full swing when one of them turned around and noticed Lily looming over them. The expression on their faces changed in an instant. Sorry, Miss Linden. We'll get back to work. Lily bit her lip tightly, trying hard to put up with the humiliation. Even though she was the general manager, it was hard not to get red-faced in this situation. She did not go out for lunch, but instead locked herself in her office, unable to help herself but to get teary-eyed. Meanwhile, Daryl was walking home while humming a tune. He had to attend his high school reunion in a moment, so he went back to change. Initially, Daryl was in a good mood, but as he entered the house, he was greeted by the sight of Samantha sitting cross-legged on the sofa, looking at him with cold eyes. Daryl, good timing to be back. Get over here. Daryl had been living with the family for three years, and the fear he had for Samantha was extreme. Daryl, pack your stuff. You're going to get a divorce tomorrow and move out of here, said Samantha coldly. But ma'am, my love for Lily is sincere, said Daryl with his head lowered. After three years of company, it was certain that he would develop feelings for Lily. Samantha slammed the table upon hearing those words. She stood up and walked up next to Daryl. You love my daughter? What right do you have to love her? I've put up with you for three years. What else can you do besides household chores? How are you fit for my daughter? Do you know that numerous men are vying to be with my daughter? Ashton Adagio just called and said as long as I grant him my daughter, he'll immediately give her a dowry of 20 million bucks. 20 million dowry? Daryl let out a faint smile. Ashton was a distant relative under the Darby clan. He was the son of an aunt. All the funds for Ashton's company were sponsored by the Darbys. Daryl had already called his clan beforehand, and within 24 hours, Ashton Adagio would be left with nothing. How would he find that 20 million? Ma'am, I won't leave. I'll agree to the divorce, but only if Lily says it to me in person. Daryl finished his words, turned around, and left the house. How dare you! Come back here right now! Samantha stomped her feet in anger and went after Daryl in her high heels, but he was too far gone. In the evening at Neptunus Corporation, Lily had locked herself in her office for the entire day. That video of Daryl had gone viral around the company, making him a laughingstock. Lily took a deep breath before slowly leaving her office. All right, you guys can leave now, said Lily to her employees. Miss Linden, there's a package for you. The front desk receptionist carried a box over and handed it to Lily. Upon seeing the box, the crowd let out a sound of astonishment. It, it cannot possibly be so luxurious. How can a mere delivery package be gilded? Wow, what delivery package is this? Yeah, Miss Lily, it's my first time seeing a gilded delivery package. 
Surely it must be a gift from someone. Open it up and let's see, Miss Lily. Although Lily was stern at work, she maintained a good relationship with her employees. Everyone was curious about the package, and it was as if the entire office had formed a crowd around her. Lily wondered as well. She had never bought stuff online. Where could this package have come from? Seeing that everyone was excited, Lily let out a little smile and gently opened the box. It was at that instant when everyone was stupefied. There was a pin drop silence for about ten seconds before everybody suddenly spoke in fearer. This, this is the worship of Krista? It can't be. The globally limited to only 99 pairs and sold for up to 30 million dollars. That worship of Crystal? It's so beautiful, Miss Lily. You're such a fortunate lady. They were discussing among themselves, but Lily herself could not utter a single word. She had been fond of this pair of heels for many years. One look was enough for her to determine that it was the real deal. How is this possible? Lily stepped back in disbelief. It was as if she was in a dream. Unless, unless Ashton had sold his company and gifted her this pair of heels? The thought of that touched Lily's heart. If she wore the worship of Crystal to tonight's gathering, she would surely be the talk of the place. Donghai City, Floria KTV This KTV is one of Donghai City's famous entertainment centers. Buying power was very high. Those who came are all famous people, filling up the entrance with their luxurious cars. It was here that Daryl would be attending his high school reunion. Daryl rode his newly bought electric bike here. He was whistling a tune as he parked his vehicle at the entrance. He had wanted to buy a car, but he had given his identity card to the Patriarch, so he could only settle for a bike for now. He was about to meet his high school classmates soon, and he was excited. It was just as he got his vehicle parked that he heard a hurried whistling. Can you move? You're only riding a shabby bike, and you want to occupy an entire spot? A BMW 5 Series stopped by the side. The driver stuck his head out of the window and called out to Daryl. The man and Daryl locked eyes and were surprised to see each other. Class monitor? said Daryl as he ran toward the car. The man inside the car was none other than Daryl's high school class monitor, Clifford Conway. Daryl? What happened to you? Clifford got out of his car and looked Daryl up and down before he merely let out a cold laugh and hastily went into the KTV. Daryl awkwardly called out to him, wanting to strike up a conversation, but Clifford had no intention of acknowledging him. The two of them walked to the reserve KTV room one after another. The rest of the class had already arrived, and they turned their heads toward the door upon seeing their arrival. Class monitor is so handsome now, truly a successful man. The room turned lively upon his arrival. They were all crowding around Clifford. Clifford was wearing a suit, and it looked expensive. More importantly, he was holding a BMW car key in his hand. Meanwhile, Daryl, who was cast aside, was dressed in bargain goods, and in his hands were merely keys for an electric bike. His appearance was no different from a delivery person. No one even cared to acknowledge him. It was truly an awkward moment. However, Daryl did not care for such things. His eyes scanned the vicinity. After not seeing them for so many years, his female classmates were prettier than the other. The prettiest of all, however, was still Giselle Lind. Giselle was the class's goddess. She frequently wore jeans that accentuated her firm figure. Her beauty was unrivaled. A few years without seeing Giselle, it seemed that she had acquired a touch of maturity, exuding an air of gentleness. She wore skin-tight jeans to the reunion, further enchanting any onlookers. Clifford also took notice of Giselle and was hooked almost immediately. He could not help but ask, Giselle, you're so charming. What are you up to these days? Before Giselle could reply, a lady nearby had already replied first. Class monitor, you should know by now that Giselle is going to be a celebrity. She is signing a contract with Platinum Corporation soon. 
Whoa! The room was in an uproar. Who in Donghai City has not heard of Platinum Corporation? Several A-list celebrities were all under them. To be fair, Giselle was a beautiful woman. Compared to the other A-list celebrities, she was not any inferior to them at all. Daryl was excited upon hearing Platinum Corporation mentioned, for when tomorrow comes, that company would belong to him. On that thought, Daryl smiled and approached Giselle, wanting to sit beside her and have a chat. As he sat down, he saw Giselle frowning, giving him a contempt look as she said, Can you not sit here? Oh? Daryl stood up slowly. Is someone sitting here? Nope, I just don't want to sit beside you. Giselle replied coldly. Daryl, you're attending our high school reunion. Can't you at least put on some decent clothes? Isn't it dirty wearing those bargained goods? Chapter 4 Damn you, I just washed this set of clothes yesterday, and now you're saying it's dirty? Daryl thought to himself. He was about to voice his opinion, but before he could do so, he was dragged away by Alex Armstrong. The two were close friends back in high school. They had fought together and even ditched class together. Alex might be the only one tonight that was not disgusted with Daryl. Dragging Daryl to a corner, Alex shook his head and said, Bro, I'm telling you, a girl like Giselle isn't the type for us to get hung up on. Aren't you asking to be ridiculed for simply sitting beside her? Daryl said nothing and merely chuckled. They whined and dined the whole night through, and the evening passed by quickly. Giselle was a little tipsy, and under the crowd's pressure, she picked up the microphone and sang while gently swaying her body. Her appearance was sensual and seductive, striking awe at the men around her. Giselle was truly a beauty. It was only at night when they decided to call it a day. The class teacher could not make it, as she had something on at the last moment so they agreed to have another gathering next Monday. As they left, all the men were vying to send Giselle back. However, when they arrived at the entrance, she got on her own Porsche and left the scene, leaving them stupefied. Such a beauty, mumbled Alex at the side. Daryl, no wonder you wanted to sit next to her. I wouldn't mind having my life shortened by ten years if it means I could spend only a night with her. Daryl let out a cold laugh. So, Giselle intends to go to Platinum Corporation tomorrow to have her contract signed. Excellent, thought Daryl, as he too had planned to go there to claim his title of president. His thoughts were cut short by the sudden ringing of his cell phone. The crowd laughed upon hearing his ringtone. What era was it for somebody to still be using an old Nokia phone? Daryl hastily answered the call upon seeing the number displayed. Before he could speak, the voice of his mother-in-law, Samantha, came from the other side. Daryl, do you know that tonight is our clan's annual gathering? Do you want our entire family to wait for you? Get your ass back here immediately. Daryl let out a wail. He had completely forgotten about the gathering. He quickly got on his scooter in front of his classmates and sped away. Even though he was quite a considerable distance away, he could still hear the voices of his female classmates laughing at him. A Land Rover was parked at the gate of a high-end residential community in Beihai City. A beautiful woman was standing in front of the car, looking at her phone impatiently. I'm back, said Daryl, struggling to catch his breath. He stopped his scooter and ran toward Lily. He could see that she was wearing the worship of crystal on her delicate feet. It seemed that she really liked the gift as she put it on so fast. However, Lily merely gave Daryl a cold glance. I'm warning you, today is the Linden Clan's annual gathering. You best keep your mouth shut and not embarrass me. Oh, acknowledged Daryl. Daryl had barely gotten in the car when he heard another complaint. Daryl, don't you have a suit? Don't you know how embarrassing it is to wear such bargain goods? asked Samantha coldly. Samantha was wearing a short dress that accentuated her beauty. A touch of maturity combined with seductiveness, she was truly an elegant sight to behold. Daryl shrugged his shoulders without saying anything. 
Samantha flew into a rage upon seeing Daryl's indifferent behavior. Are you deaf or dumb? Look at how worthless you are. Having you marry my daughter has cursed our family for eight generations. Mom, don't be mad, said Lily gently while driving. How can I not be mad, said Samantha as she pointed at Daryl. I'm ordering you, after tonight's gathering, immediately go to the marriage registry and settle your divorce. Stop hanging around my house. Do you understand me? Daryl sat there speechless. At that moment, over a hundred cars were parked outside the Linden clan's villa, and without exception, all of them were luxurious cars. When Lily and her family arrived, the hall was already filled with people. Several people went up to greet Lily upon her arrival. During such occasions, Daryl was treated as if he was invisible. No one cared to acknowledge him. However, he did not mind that, for he was only here to join in the fun. Once the food arrived, he was ready to dig in as much as he could. However, some people enjoy causing trouble when there is none, such as William Linden. He appeared to have something against Daryl. Every time they meet, he would hurl a couple of insults at Daryl. Yoo-hoo! Aren't you Linden Clan's good little son-in-law, Daryl? Asked William as he walked from afar, purposely speaking in a loud tone. Daryl, I might have seen the clothes you're wearing at the bargain bin. What are they, ten bucks each? William's words made Daryl the focus of the entire hall. They gawked at him as if he was a monkey. Mind your words, this cost me nineteen bucks, mumbled Daryl. The crowd let out a burst of roaring laughter. A few ladies who tried to maintain their composure ultimately caved in and laughed. Just shut your mouth, said Lily in a hushed tone. She could feel her pride besmirched by Daryl yet again. If not for the clan rule that every single member of the family must attend the gathering, she would not have even allowed him to come. Oh, Lily, it's not that I look down on your family. I don't even care that your husband is wearing something that is only 19 bucks. The dress you're wearing, however, can't cost more than 1800 William laughed. Wouldn't you feel embarrassed wearing such a low-end dress? Do you see this suit I'm wearing? It's tailor-made Ermengildo Zegna. Do you know how much it costs? William stuck a few fingers out and shook them in front of Daryl and Lily. Seven hundred thousand! Wow! William's words triggered the crowd to cast an admiring stare. The ladies were awestruck, and the men were envious of him as well. Lily bit her lip tightly. Indeed, her dress had only cost her twelve hundred bucks. She would not even dare to dream of having clothing that would cost seven hundred thousand. Lily felt as if the whole crowd was laughing at her like a joke. Her beautiful face showed a hint of blush. Out of a sudden, Daryl walked toward William and gave his suit a light touch. Are you mad? William exclaimed as he flew into a rage. You have no right touching this suit. Daryl merely smiled and said, I think the suit you're wearing isn't appropriate for the occasion. This suit was designed by a famous Italian fashion designer named Francesco Martin. There's only one in existence, and it's currently housed in the Italian Fashion Museum. Hence, the one you're wearing is a replica, and not just that, it's a crude imitation. There's an uncut thread on your right pocket. You may take off that thread now. If my calculations are correct, this suit is only worth 200 bucks. Even my wife's 1200 bucks dress has better quality than your suit. Another thing, this suit's inspiration was derived from his father, Petrarch, who had depression after his bankruptcy. He felt that the world was distorted. Therefore, the stripes on this suit are crooked to represent his perspective of distorted reality. He continued, The fact that you're wearing this suit today, are you hoping for the Linden clan to go bankrupt as well? said Daryl as he smiled. His voice was not loud, yet his words echoed throughout the hall. Silence. Total silence. The crowd was shocked by his words. 
they found it hard to believe that those words came out of Daryl's mouth. Oh, right, another thing I forgot to mention. My wife isn't too demanding with her clothes, but her standard for shoes is immense. His words came one after another. The heels on her feet is the worship of Crystal. If you've never heard of it, you can read it up online. Wow. The worship of Crystal? It truly is the real thing! How magnificent! The crowd was chattering with excitement. The women here were all of high standing. How would they have not heard of the worship of Crystal? One glance was enough to determine that the heels on Lily's feet were genuine. That was the worship of Crystal that cost 30 million! Try asking and see which woman would not love it. Lily instantly became the focus of attention, and she was showered by praises and admirers. Lily could not help but look at Daryl. After three years of marriage, this was the first time she felt that this piece of trash resembled a real man. But how did Daryl know all this information? The Italian designer's name and inspiration, surely only a handful of people would know. After some thinking, Lily deduced that Daryl must have secretly looked it up online beforehand. You're talking nonsense, said William, pointing at Daryl angrily with embarrassment. Smack! Out of nowhere, Samantha slapped Daryl. It was a hard slap, and in an instant, the whole crowd stood there in silence from the shock. Daryl, what are you babbling about? Apologize to William right now! Samantha demanded coldly.